I think the most terrifying part of the avalanche that we witnessed in the Chick Chocks that isn't captured in any of the video was the sound of a massive avalanche going into the woods and breaking small trees and twigs. In the morning, we were pumped to try to ski this one zone that we've been looking at for a while. Over the last couple of days, we've been looking at the avalanche report. We're looking at things like, what's the elevation? How much snow did they get? What's the aspect and what has the wind direction been like? And all of those indications, including the avalanche forecast for this area and this aspect was low. And it had been for three days straight. So we felt like this was as good of a time to go explore this area as any. So Louise was the first one to drop in. After sort of testing the slope initially, she chose a line that was far skiers right. We had the drone out, we had three other camera angles out, and she got to the bottom and she radioed up once she got into the designated safe zone. I couldn't see the chute that Nick and Louise were skiing until it got about two thirds of the way down to where Louise was actually standing on a high point between the two chutes. I know that Nick dropped in, took a couple turns and my radio starts to explode. First thing I heard, it sounded like Lincoln's voice saying slide, slide, slide. Slide, 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 slide. I do not. A lot down, a lot down. I repeat, a lot down. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you have eyes on? Everybody put your beacons to receive. Beacons to receive. We are going into search mode and we need to make sure that we found them as quickly as possible. Well, Nick Martin, who came on the trip with us, he's been one of my longest backcountry ski partners that I've had. I basically started backcountry skiing with him and a few other guys in college. He's one of my best friends, and that made this whole situation even more terrifying. One thing that is really important when you go out in the backcountry is to make sure that you are skiing with a group of people who you trust and have the skills to react in the appropriate way in a situation like that. We definitely did. I think if there's one silver lining for this whole thing, it's seeing the training that we've all had actually kick in and work. We triggered an avalanche and it's really easy to sit there and think about all the things that went wrong. Um, but what also is important to think about is the things that we did right. There were two people located below the avalanche on that same hill and neither of them got taken out by the avalanche. We made sure that people were posted up in safe zones. We made sure that people skied down the chute one at a time. We made sure that after Luis went down that she had a predetermined safe zone that we had all chosen for her to get to. And she got there and it probably saved her life. We're in the east and avalanches do happen here. They can be as big and as terrifying as they are anywhere else. I think the biggest lesson is to get trained, to trust your training and trust your instincts. And you're making your own judgment calls when you're on the hill and you're talking it through with your backcountry partners throughout the experience to make sure you're getting input. When you get a red flag, explore more. If you need to dig a pit, dig a pit. 
you need to do other things to just understand what you're feeling and why you're feeling that way, that's what you've got to do. It's definitely going to affect my decision making moving forward. We've been really looking forward to finally getting out in the cat and uh, heading up with Ski Chick Chocks. Mm -hmm. 